In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you around the MATLAB environment and explain how information flows and how we can use the environment to do a lot of different things. But first, I want to make sure we all have the same experience. So uh, if you would, after you open it up, come up here in the uh, Home tab in the ribbon, and there's a button over here that says Layout. Just go ahead and click that, come down, and select Default. Now, I've already done that, so mine looks like this. Some of you may have something that says three column um, or default, so just choose three column or default, please. Uh, after that, I want to add one more piece. So again, click that, come down to command history, and in this uh, menu that pops out to the side, select docked. And right down here, you have a command history. Now, if yours doesn't dock down at the bottom right, then just when you click inside of the window, the bar at the top turns blue. Just click, hold, and drag it around until the box goes where it needs to, and there we are. So MATLAB is a programming environment. It has its own language and interprets its own code, so um, it's also very forgiving. This is one of the reasons why it's good for a lot of beginning programmers to use MATLAB to sort of cut their teeth uh, and get up to speed with programming methods. Also, there is no memory management, which excuse me, doesn't really mean anything to you right now, and that's fine. Um, but also when MATLAB throws an error, it's also very helpful and, and forgiving in trying to help you root out the cause of the error and fix it. Um, so these are big pluses and reasons why MATLAB is a, a great place for people to learn how to program. Um, it, when I say it's powerful, it's, it's really powerful. Here, let's take a look. So I'm going to click on this F of X. It's next to these bars. This is just a sampling of all of the functions that are built in. Uh, you want to think of, uh, for those of you that, that have never programmed before, a function is like all of the buttons and capabilities that are available to you on your graphing calculator. These are all of the buttons that would be available to you on your graphing calculator. Okay, you can deep go deep down in the menu of your graphing calculator, but it doesn't have anywhere near the power that this does. So we can do a lot of different things, including things like uh, object recognition, neural networking. So here's neural networking, there's an object, there's parallel computing. There's image processing, image acquisition, so you can use your webcam and your camera to identify uh, people, objects. Um, this is basically the technology that's used in self-driving cars, right? They take, they scan the environment, recognize objects, and then make decisions based on all of that. So now let's talk about the flow of information. Here we have the current folder. The current folder contains all of the pieces that you are bringing to the environment, programs, data files, whatever. The second piece is the command window. The command window is where we can run a whole lot of different commands. This is like the command line of your calculator, and you can run commands one by one, and eventually we're going to be making programs. A program is a sequential set of commands that are executed in order to accomplish a task. But this is where we're going to try a few things out today. Um, and then here's the workspace. The workspace saves or stores the outputs of all of the commands that were executed in the command window. The last piece is the command history. The command history set, uh, stores or saves a record of all of the commands that have been run in the command window. So let's get started. Again, like a calculator on steroids, we have nothing in our current folder, so we're not bringing any information to this whole thing. So let's just start 2 plus 2. And when we enter 2 plus 2, we're greeted with answer equals 4. You can also see over here in the workspace that we have a variable, ANS, and it stores a value of 4. Now, one of the fundamental things or, or one of the key components of a programming environment that is very beneficial is that we can abstract the uh, referencing of inter, uh, information. And what that means is this, that if I want to type ANS, I can now access that value of 4 just by ANS. I don't have to type 2 plus 2 every time. Every time I want to use it, I can type ANS. But I also wasn't specific about what I wanted that 2 plus 2 to be stored as. So if I next say 2 plus 8, then now ANS equals 10. And over here in my workspace, I can see that ANS equals 10. So now I've lost that previously saved value of 4. So I do want to be, a very, or be very specific. So now let's say A equals 2 plus 2 and B equals 2 plus 8. And now over in my workspace, I have A storing that previously uh, stored value of 4 and B storing the currently stored value of 10. Again, previously and currently in terms of ANS. So now, having been specific, I can save those pieces of information. Now, anytime I want to use the value of 4, I can type A. Anytime I want to use the value of 10, I can type B. This is what it means to abstract that, that information uh, out of the process. Now we're going to reference it by its name, not its value. The other thing to note is that 
The flow of information in most programming languages is from light, right to left. So here I want to store 2 plus 8 into B. Here I want to store 2 plus 2 into A. So this is a very important concept because um, it, a lot of people, or a few people, some people, would say 2 plus 2 equals B. And MATLAB would say, no, that's not a valid target. So this is what the errors in MATLAB look like. And again, because the flow of information goes from right to left, we have to write it in this way. And this isn't totally dissimilar to what it is that you've done in elementary math courses before. So this format should be fairly uh, uh, comfortable to you. But it is important to notice that the flow of information goes from right to left. This is pushed into B. Okay. Um, there are other types of data that we will be working with, like arrays. And I'll just give you one, comma, two, semicolon, three, comma, four. Um, there's also uh, strings. So we'll just say a string is something like a sentence. Hi, my name is Joseph. Okay. So there we go. So now we have single numbers, which is nothing more than a one by one matrix because MATLAB stands for matrix laboratory. We have a two by two, two row, two column array or matrix, <coughs> excuse me. And then we also have a, a sting or string. Let's fix that because that's supposed to be string. And let's capitalize the J. There we go. And now we have a character array. And we can see all of these things over here. If I hover over A, it shows me that this is a one by one double, which is basically a one, one row, one column numeric array. If I hover over arrays, it's a two row, two column numeric array. And if I ho hover over string, this is one row, 22 columns of characters. So that sentence is 22 characters long. So now we've shown this is the information that we bring. And in this tutorial, we didn't bring any information. The command window is where we enter all of our commands. The workspace stores the output of all of our commands. And the command history has saved a record. The last two things I want to show you is this. Clear. If I type clear and press enter, I'll lose all the data in my workspace. So I'll just clear it out. And if I type CLC, then I will clear out all of the information in my command window. And now I have a clean instance of MATLAB. Just like when we first opened, we had a blank current folder, blank current uh, command window, blank workspace, but we still have the record over here in our command history of all of the commands that we executed. So uh, next time we're going to cover some of the rules for naming these variables. Um, but until then, uh, you are more than welcome and I would encourage you to get into MATLAB, take a look at some of these built-in functions, take a look at some of the tutorials online. Uh, play around with the user interface, play around with the workspace and the command window. Um, and in, until next time.